Carrie, this has been a long process. It started in July. That's when the city put up these road close signs around Mount Carmel Baptist Church because that building, Building B, was deemed unsafe. But in the next couple days, these signs will be moved and traffic will be back to normal. Take a look at this truck. There's still a bullet hole in the back of this truck. And if you walk towards me here, the window, excuse me, you can see this passenger window is completely shattered. And then through there, it looks like the bullet went through the back window and straight through the driver's side window. Now, this is just one car of many that were hit this morning. Our Ryan Moore was on the scene as the situation unfolded. The UL Fire Safety Research Institute says closing all the doors in your home at bedtime will not only protect you from the heat, but will also slow down that thick, toxic smoke. If you get your insulin or other medication mailed to you, it sure is convenient, but you want to make sure it's not in that mailbox or on your doorstep for too long, especially with these freezing temperatures. Carrie and Steve, the scene is clear here at Westchester Apartments, but police are still searching for the suspect or suspects who they say could be involved in a shooting at that upstairs apartment earlier today. Now. Back in August, Mayor Toby Barker told me an inmate escaping from this courthouse should not and could not happen ever again. Now with new leadership, there's some new processes and policies being put in place to make sure that everything that happens here in the courthouse is not only easier, but also safer. So with this concept plan, say you're leaving Chick-fil-A, you would have to make that right onto Cross Creek Parkway and then use the roundabout to get back up to Highway 98. This is exactly where the suspect's truck was. You can see some of the glass is still in the grass from that black truck this morning. But inside the nightclub, it was a little bit of a different situation. While the chaos was unfolding out here, folks inside didn't know what was going on. The music, the atmosphere, they didn't hear any of the gunshots inside that building. Now, they didn't know what was going on until they tried to leave this morning. I caught up with some folks and the manager of Ropers early this morning. The Golden Eagles were set to host Stony Brook University here the weekend of February 23rd, but instead that weekend it will look just like it does now, dark and very quiet. University officials tell me this scheduling situation is extremely rare and a first here at Southern Miss. So if you still need tickets to that game on Friday night, they will be on sale again tomorrow at noon till 5 o'clock. Yes, on Thanksgiving Day. And then the ticket office will be open on Friday at noon tailgating. You can also start doing that around the stadium at 8 a.m. Friday morning. So no Black Friday shopping. There will be two areas, one for Laurel fans and one for Hattiesburg fans. For now in Hattiesburg, Melissa Egan, WDAM 7 News. This is WDAM 7 News at 6. Good evening. Thanks for joining us right now. This man, Tremarius Wash, is behind bars in Jones County facing several charges, one of them injuring a public service animal after police say he fired at and then choked a canine during a pursuit. Melissa Egan joins us now from the Laurel Police Department. Melissa. Carrie and Steve, that canine Johnny is fine tonight. He is at home. He works that overnight shift. But this is Castor, one of the three other canines here at the Laurel Police Department. And officers say that early morning incident this morning highlights just how important it is to have these guys on the force. It says burglar beware off Old Bay Springs Road, but Clark Lowry, who lives down the street, says his neighborhood has been a hot spot for car break-ins. You get hit one time and you say, oh, well, you know, bad luck, whatever. But when you get hit a second and third time, you feel like you're prey. Tonight, Clark and his neighbors have Johnny to thank for helping get one of those possible criminals off their street. I heard uh, screaming and a big commotion. That commotion around 4 o'clock this morning after Laurel Police got a call about two suspicious men in the area, one with a gun. Captain Tommy Cox says the two suspects ran and Johnny did too. Generally, you know, if we release the dog, uh, they apprehend and the subjects are ready to give up because they just don't want to be bitten like anybody else, but this is the first time I remember a shot being fired and choking the dog and things such as that, so it definitely outside the norm. Cox says the dangerous situation could have turned deadly fast, showing just how much the department's four-legged officers can help. Well, if you take the canine out of the equation, you've got an officer approaching the guy in that backyard when a shot's fired. And the department says they're thankful for the thousands of dollars in donations from the community that has helped put those canines on the force. It's not an inexpensive proposition, but I, as last night proves, it was pretty worthwhile. 
Police say Tremarius Wash was out on bond for an auto burglary when that incident happened this morning. He's expected to be back in court on Friday. The charge of injuring a public service animal is a felony here in the state of Mississippi, and the penalty could be up to five years in jail. In Laurel, Melissa Egan, WDAM 7 News. It's a constant threat no matter where you live. Someone breaking into your home and taking your stuff. How many homes would you say that you think you've burglarized? 50, 100? Wow. A bunch. A bunch? A bunch. Ricky Strickland was a convicted criminal, spent time behind bars, and says he started breaking into homes at 15 years old. Support a habit, most of all. Uh, it was a means of living just like a job. The FBI reports there were over 23,000 burglaries in Mississippi last year. Of those, 363 were in Jones County, 270 in Lamar County, over 370 in Hattiesburg, and nearly 250 in Laurel. The easiest thing to do, man, is to get into a neighborhood, not a rural area. And those crimes cost victims about $3.6 billion. About 60% of burglaries happen in the day, and Ricky says that's true. Usually it's just because you're riding around and you see something you want, you know, and you get out. Uh, just normal clothes. The Jones County Sheriff's Department says the most active time from 7.30 in the morning to 4.30 in the afternoon. Make yourself at home in somebody else's neighborhood. When most of you are at work or out of the house. What if someone was home? Uh, then you just spoke to them, you know, hey, how you doing? Is so-and-so here? Or uh, I'm broke down down the road. Could I use your telephone or something like that? And just play it off as... You wasn't there to do anything. And when you are home enjoying the cooler weather. Open windows are always a telltale sign. Living room, window. You need to cover your windows because you have cracks in windows. Matter of fact, you can walk up to just about any blind set and where the strings go, there's holes. If you stand there and look long enough, you can look straight through those holes and see everything in a home. Everything. Ricky says those security system signs out front won't really do much, but what will help? Cameras. No, that right there is a no-go. That is a no-go. And Captain Tanya Madison says they proved to help. We recommend everyone to put up a camera, a, a deer camera, a game camera, whatever type camera that, and make sure that they're functioning because you're just sitting there saying, oh, I got cameras, and then, well, they don't work. That's not going to help, you know, our case and help us solve your case. Plus, your pets may not be as scary as you think. Once inside... First thing that I would look for is a gun safe, a gun cabinet. First place that I would look would be in the closets if I were trying to find anything. The places where people feel like they can hide stuff under the beds. Ricky says the burglary can happen in record time, grabbing a sheet from the bed or a bag to collect things in plain sight. It don't take very long for a man to go in with his mindset. And he'd leave, just like he's done with his past. Ricky's been clean for six years now and spends most of his time with Dying to Live Ministries. This is our life and how short it is. Talking to the community about his experiences. You know, the things that I've seen and the things that I've done in my life, it's uh, absolutely amazing that I'm not dead. That one of those nights breaking into a home, somebody didn't shoot and kill me, or the person that I was selling drugs to their children, somebody hasn't already killed me. I'm just amazed that I'm still alive, and I thank God for it. I'm Melissa Egan for 7 on your side. to look at a natural disaster and ask why we've seen many people at peace and joining together to take on the last year. Our Melissa Egan has one story tonight about how two congregations made their way to the same place to worship. The building was here on the dirt part. It was a raised building. Pastor Melvin Hudson says home. it's still hard to walk through what was the sanctuary at Christian church Tabernacle Church. And so in the old saying, say you don't miss the, uh, the water till the well runs dry. So we, we de definitely miss being here. The decades old church taken by the EF3 tornado. It was the place he preached at for 25 years. A lot of memories, a lot of memories. Um, uh, it's, it's just hard to remember all the thoughts that was going through my mind then, but the most important ones was that we was all safe. Safe, 
and not stopping. That Sunday, Pastor Hudson held a service at a local hotel, and that's where his congregation would meet several Sundays after. Uh, it took a minute not to, not to just drive by and sit out in the car and just say, well, where do we go from here? But it was help from the community that would connect Pastor Hudson and his congregation here to Pastor Ryan Ruckel at Ridgecrest Baptist Church. The way we understand disaster uh, is, you know, God spares, and then when when disaster strikes, God also rebuilds. You see, Pastor Ruckel says this open space gave his congregation a way to serve. At first, I wasn't sure that there would be a use for our space. With the help of volunteers, they were able to carpet the floors and paint the cinder block. Now Sunday and the space are shared. And the people chose with Moses. Christian Tabernacle is able to hold Sunday school in the back of the building while members from Ridgecrest Baptist are in the sanctuary. And then like clockwork, another service begins. They've been such an encouragement to us and they're, they're so concerned that they wouldn't be any kind of burden and that they would uh, contribute and we've been so concerned that they would feel welcome. It's like both churches have just gone overboard to try to be um, in fellowship with each other. The two both say they don't think they ever would have met each other without the storm. They call it a blessing in disguise. I believe that the local church, the smaller congregations that are able to come together and work together as we have done, uh, shows the kind of love that uh, I think that God wants us to show. As for the concrete slab and empty space off Edward Street, it will stay that way. Pastor Hudson says he was already in the process of building a bigger church in Hattiesburg. We would all say sometimes we don't understand why storms hit our lives or why storms comes in our lives, but uh, I think they all are necessary and it uh, allows us to prepare for the future. We have a lot of stories about Mississippi that are often uncomplimentary and don't really account for what the the ordinary people are. Uh, none of these people are ordinary. In Hattiesburg? They're all extraordinary in their generosity and simple love and um, desire to be in fellowship together. Melissa Egan, WDAM 7 News.